should turn me down when I'm so crazy over you. When I'm so crazy over you. This 64 and more interview began during a chance conversation at a theater gala in Buffalo, New York and finished up in a penthouse apartment on New York City's Upper East Side. My subject? A ten-time Tony Award winner with a collective of 14 additional awards for acting, directing, and choreographing Broadway plays, including two Lifetime Achievements, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and the National Medal of Arts Award for Achievement. Yet... As I quickly learned, the man who has earned all of these titles is still pretty much a Texas boy with a passion for dancing and a love of performing. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Tommy Toon. It's a great name, but when you were a kid in high school or in grade school, right? Oh, I've always been kidded about it. And, if, and now, you know, everybody thinks it's a stage name because mm-hmm. I'm in the theater. Everybody just assumes that I name myself that. I would never have named myself that. When I had my seven-year contract with 20th Century Fox, they wanted to change my name because they th- felt that it was two musicals and musicals were moving out of, the, of popularity. And they said it sounded too phony. So we went through the name game. But I, I, I couldn't live with any of the names they thought. Was there a time frame when you went from being a normal general height like all the other boys in the class to being like a head taller? Yeah, I was a squirt up until the summer between junior high school and high school. My first dancing partner, Patricia Swansea, was taller than me. You know, I didn't realize it. You know, you don't, you're a kid, you don't know. But then I started growing, and it was before the salt vaccine, and I woke up one morning in agony, and my mother started crying because she just knew that I'd gotten polio. And we rushed to the hospital, and they did all of this. And they said, well, we have good news and bad news. The good news is it's not polio. Infantile paralysis is what they called it. The bad news is it's growing pains, and there's nothing we can do for it. And I said, well, how long is it going to last? He said, we don't know. It depends on how much you're going to grow. But it will be painful for you because your bones are growing faster than your muscles can adapt to. And the, you're, the pain that you're getting is in your muscles. And so he took a Ticonderoga pencil and he said, this is the bone of your leg. And then he took a wide rubber band. He said, and this is your muscle. And he put it around the racer end and he started pulling it toward the point of the pencil and he said this is what's happening see and your muscles have to get to where they can be like that graphic illustration right and and i understood it so i just had to wait it out and thank god i learned to dance i'd been dancing because i had strength in my legs i think maybe my muscles were a little my leg muscles were a little overdeveloped from dancing and so maybe that was why it hurt that i were if they were looser muscles was there a specific time period when you grew an, an enormous amount, or was it just a gradual? It, well, that was that summer I shot up like mad. And I kept growing past 21. You know, you're supposed to be fully grown by 21, and I kept growing. When you're this tall, you don't know you're this tall. Your perspective is your perspective, and you were looking at the world from here, and then you came up with it, so you don't realize it. You really don't realize it till people start telling you, then you start seeing pictures of yourself with the crowd and you're ahead above everybody else. Were you ever unhappy being tall? Well, yeah, because I wanted to be a ballet dancer. So that was, I had to make a big adjustment there. What was it about the ballet that attracted you? The sense of flight. When you're doing a grand jeté for that moment that you're up and then as you get stronger, you can stay up for a little bit longer a little millimeter longer. And I love that sensation of being airborne. I was good and and then I got so long that it was unwieldy. It didn't look right. So that's when my mother took me to see the movie of Easter Parade starring Fred Astaire. And that was the first time I saw Fred Astaire. And he looked really tall and skinny you know, on the screen, which he, he was not tall, uh, but he looked tall. 
And so I went, oh, okay, then I'll do that. And it was that simple, yeah. just like that. Because, uh, you know, tights, I started looking funny in tights because my legs were so skinny and so long. And so he was not wearing tights. He was dancing, great dancing, but he was wearing clothes. So I've been dancing around in my pants <laughs> ever <laughs> since. I didn't see a play until I was 17 years old. No, I'm sorry, 15. I was 15. And it was a play, it was the, the, the Glass Menagerie. And it, it changed my life because I, I never knew that you could sit in a big dark room with other people and characters would live their lives for you in, in front of you and they were there. And it was stunning. It was, a, it was a stunning play and I was devastated by it. For my graduation present from high school, I asked for a trip. People were getting cars and gold watches and I wanted a trip to New York to see what a Broadway show was. Because I'd seen, by this time, I'd seen a couple of touring companies of Broadway shows. And I wanted to go see the real thing in a real Broadway theater. The big show that year was My Fair Lady. And you couldn't get in to see My Fair Lady. But the way you could do it was to buy a ticket through Neiman Marcus. Neiman Marcus was selling Broadway tickets? Neiman Marcus got a load of tickets to My Fair Lady and they sold them at a huge price. $25 because everything else on Broadway cost the best seat in the house was $9.90 and you could see a Broadway show for $3 from the balcony. Oh my goodness. I know. This is ancient history. So they sprung for the 25 bucks for me to see My Fair Lady because that was the one. It wasn't my favorite show of the ones that I saw. I saw a show called New Girl in Town starring Gwen Verdon and Thelma Ritter. And I was obsessed with Gwen Verdon because she was a dancing star. And the other shows didn't have dancing stars. They had dancing, but they didn't have dancing stars. But when I looked at it, I saw what I wanted to be. I wanted to be one of the chorus boys in the show. I wanted to dance. My dream was to dance in the chorus of a Broadway show. Just the chorus? You didn't want to be out front? No. I'm very practical. You, you got to know a lot more to be in front of the chorus, <laughs> in the follow spot. I went, I, that's what I want to do. So, but, but can, let me just ask you something very practical in, in the way you just explained it. It's easier. There's not as much work involved to be in the back as opposed no, to the front. No, it's more work because you have to match everybody. You're not, you can't, if you make a mistake, you ruin the scene. But if a star does, goes wrong, they're not matching anybody, especially for me to match everybody because I'm so tall. So I knew I wasn't ready after that summer seeing all of those shows. So I went to college. I decided I need to learn more. I need to learn more about everything before I try to go do that. But also in high school, I started making up dances. And we didn't know that it was called choreography. I didn't know the job was a choreographer. I just, we just call it making up dances. So I would make up dances for all the, all the shows that we put on in high school. And I had a wonderful drama teacher that really turned me on to the theater in general. Dancing saved me because I didn't fit the mold of what everybody else looked like. I was a string bean. I was excruciatingly thin. By the time I was 40, the most that I had ever weighed was 164. And so you have to imagine how much I must have weighed. And you know, 125, and I was six foot six. My father was six two, but he was a very big man. And, he, and I kept asking him, when am I gonna fill out? And he would say, oh, I was a beanpole like you till I was 15, and then I filled out. So 15 came, 16, 17, and it never happened. <laughs> it never evolved. The overall perspective now of your growing up years in Texas. Good experience? Hard times? It was hard being the only boy in the dancing school. Not, not at dancing, but the only dancing boy in the whole high school, junior high school. You know, and that was sissy. I was called sissy a lot because I danced. Did you ever think about not doing it because of that? Oh, absolutely not. There, I would have imploded if I didn't dance. It was, it was what saw me through. The minute that 
that school came down, I, I, was, was, I went directly to the dance studio and took every class I had until it was time to be home. <laughs>